That's, I mean, that's gotta be them. That's insane. Those are them. They're green. They're green. I have green. Oh, here they come. They're coming. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's, you guys don't understand. This is so exciting. They're coming. Oh, I can see it in the camera. Where are we going? I'm going to shoot right there. It's, it shows in camera. Because I, I have the ISO way up. So we're gonna leave the car lights on for production lights to set up. And I'm gonna go try to get that shot. Let's do it. <laughs> Unbelievable. And they weren't out. They weren't out earlier. It just happened it just, just now. It's, it's like, literally, they just start happening. They're behind you. Oh, it's, it's stunning. I can't believe it. I can't believe we can see it in the camera. A Canon 11 to 24 millimeter. Having to load it separately, you may wonder why the lens is off. Having to load it separately because this particular tripod's quick release plate is too large. We're gonna get mic'd up so you guys can hear us better. Hi guys, my name is Jason Lanier. I'm gonna give you 10 tips for shooting the Aurora Borealis, or Australis, or the Northern Lights. Number one, the Northern Lights are very unpredictable. You can have all of the websites in the world telling you what the likelihood is that it's going to show. And what we've learned in our time shooting these is that some nights it shows and some nights it doesn't. Some nights it just tells you to go kick rocks. And so you have to want to do this. You have to take the unpredictability and go with it. And if you do and you persevere, you can get some awesome results. Number two, time of year. Typically, um, you're going to shoot the northern lights between the months of September through March and that really doesn't have anything to do with it being winter time. Many people think that it has to be cold for the northern lights. That's not true. It just has to be dark. One thing to keep in mind though is if you do want to shoot this, you know, some places, you know, November, December, January can typically be wetter months. They can have more precipitation, more snow, and as a result, the skies are going to be covered and it's going to be difficult to see the aurora even if it were there. They're either going to be in the northernmost part or in the southern parts. Like there's the Aurora Australis, which is going to be Australia, Chile, places like this. For the northern lights, Alaska, Iceland, Sweden, Norway, Finland, places like that, you can really see some beautiful displays. Number three, time of night. You're going to want to shoot these primarily between the hours of 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Um, but, you know, we came out early and we saw some at 9, 9 p.m. Um, you're just looking for times where it's the darkest uh, time of evening. Number four, if you really want to do this right, um, scout some locations during the day. Uh, find areas where you have some great views all around you because you may not know where the northern lights are going to hit. And so having kind of a 360 view where you can see in all directions will help you see them much faster. Pretty cool spots, didn't we, Em? Yeah, we did. We found great spots. We've been location scouting for the last few hours and I really think it's going to pay off. Number five, gear. You need a camera, tripod, wide angle lens, and some warm clothes because typically you're going to be shooting this in the middle of the night when it's cold 
during some of the colder months of the year. So if you have those things, you can almost guarantee you'll get a great shot if you follow the settings that we're going to give you. So we're getting mittens that are little gloves that are thin. Color of the Northern Lights for the Northern Lights. There you go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Number six, how to spot them. Um, sometimes you're, the, the northern lights, it sounds corny, but make sure to look in the north if you're going for the northern lights and the south if you're going for south. Uh, you can get a little compass app on your phone to help you out with that if you don't know where to look. Typically, you'll start to see them just above the horizon line. Uh, they start kind of low and then they raise up. So the way that we saw them is they would start low right above the horizon, above the trees, and then they would rise up into the sky. And sometimes we were looking at them directly overhead and it was beautiful because they were dancing. It's something like you'd see in a sci-fi movie. It's like godlike, it's alien-like, it's really amazing. It's like misty clouds moving around, misty fog, colorful. Sometimes they look gray, but when they really get going, they get those colors popping and it is magical. They move faster than clouds. So once you see them, you'll know that's not a cloud, that's not something else. It is definitely something you've never seen before and it is worth the view. Number seven, compositions for shooting. Um, even though you know the, the, the lights are in the sky, um, try to avoid shooting directly into the sky. Not that it would hurt your camera, it won't at all. But try to avoid shooting directly into the sky with nothing in the foreground. Make your shots interesting. Get reflections in a body of water. That's a beautiful thing to do. Get a, get a road, get a house, um, mountains, forest, something down below. So you're gonna wanna stand further back, put those objects into the bottom third of your frame, and then bring out the sky. Okay, so what you're gonna do is first put your camera on self-timer. I don't want any vibration when I hit it. So you can either use a self-timer or you can use an intervalometer or a remote trigger. If you use a self-timer, then after it fires, you push it, and I have it on two seconds. Now there's no vibration when I'm shooting. That's, that's a tip for landscape, nighttime photography, astrophotography. So I'm gonna go into the focus magnifier, I'm gonna hit it, and then it's gonna show me an area where I can. So this is on man, how to do it manual focus. You set your focus magnifier on, okay, and you choose the area that you want it. In regards to settings, you're going to want to keep your ISO as low as possible. The reason for that is because of the fact that you're shooting um, a, with a lot of shadow areas in your shot. So with a lot of shadow areas, that's going to add a lot of noise. I shot all of our images on the uh, A7R 3 using uncompressed RAW because the uncompressed, I normally don't shoot that unless I'm doing landscapes or, or astrophotography, but the uncompressed RAW delivers a much better result in the shadow detail areas, enabling you to, to edit those shots better. They were shot at 30 seconds, um, f4, or even higher, I would go more narrow. Uh, I'd go to f5.6, um, 6.3, and I did that so more parts of the image were in focus. Now, there's a couple different schools of thought on that. If you have a lot of ambient light and the northern lights are incredibly vibrant and put a lot of light into the sky, you can shoot at shorter uh, shutter durations, meaning 10 to 15 seconds. The shorter duration you shoot at, the more structure and the less milky and creamy the northern lights are going to look. However, you're probably going to have to shoot at a much higher ISO, which can add a lot of noise. So I chose to have a much cleaner image in, re in regards to the noise, meaning I shot at 30 seconds and I wanted that creamier look. And uh, I love how they turned out. I was thrilled. I'm here with Miss Emmy and we're shooting. And I was, I was shooting all over the place and Emily had the great idea. She's like, Jason, I'm going to do a time lapse. I'm going to stitch these together. Like, that's awesome. And so she put uh, she put her camera, her A7R 3 in one place and just did shot after shot after shot after shot. And we're going to show it to you here. It's really cool. She, we're going to stitch all these together and it's going to show the, the variances between all of the different you know lights that were popping in the sky.
can either do that like Emily did and just kind of do it manual style or you can do it with an intervalometer. Last but not least, enjoy it. Enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. It's really one of those experiences that's a bucket list for many people. I know it was for me and for Emmy, and we absolutely enjoyed it to no ends. We were running around here dancing and having a great time. It was, it was an incredible experience. So um, one thing I would say is you gotta hope for the best. Um, there's no guarantee that they're going to hit. And uh, for that reason, if you are gonna do this, try to go to an area where there's a lots of fun things to do during the day so you don't go specifically for northern lights and when they don't happen you're sorely disappointed. Go to a place that you're going to love exploring and having fun in regardless of whether or not the northern lights hit because if you do then you won't be disappointed. So we hope you guys enjoyed this, we really do. She's behind the camera freezing right now helping me with notes, doing a great job. But um, get out there guys and shoot. Until next time, keep shooting, never give up on your dreams. Run our gear works for you and remember you only have one chance to get it right. <laughs> He's feeling it on her birthday. <laughs> now just, now just, just stage dive. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Phone concert hall at Max's. <laughs>